Hello everybody, this is Pun the Frugal Streamer. I have a tutorial for you for the OBSBOT Tail Air. Now, the Tail Air has great NDI functionality, both Wi-Fi and wireless. Wi-Fi and wireless. What did he say? Really, Paul? Wi-Fi and wired. If you have the dongle here, you can use your ethernet, but otherwise it has built-in Wi-Fi. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to simply set up NDI. It works for both, okay? The same steps work for both, uh, but I will show you how to set up NDI in the app and then use it on software like OBS Studio or using NDI Tools Studio Monitor. Both of those ways work really good and I will be doing this in 4K30. So I will be maxing it out just so you can kind of see what the quality is. Now, currently this is not the tail air. This is the OBSBOT Tiny 2. So you can also maybe get a little bit of a video comparison between the two. Okay. Kind of a two for one for you. All right. Now the big disclaimer, OBSBOT sent me the tail air. It is an engineering sample. It is not the final version of the product. So there may be some things that need to be addressed on the engineering sample that they're going to be doing through firmware updates and that stuff. But I want to remind you, this is not what the retail version will necessarily reflect. If anything, it will be better than what I currently have. And just keep that in mind. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get into the video. What's up is down, what's left is right. Okay, so now what we'll need to do is we'll need to turn the tail air on on your mobile device. So hit the power button and it should turn it on if it is being seen by your phone. And once it does that, you're going to get this option. So you want to connect to the camera and it's going to load the resources in the app so that the camera can then be seen on your phone. And here we are, right? Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and go down here below. Um, NDI mode is currently turned off, but you want to make sure you have your NDI key activated that you will get from OBSBOT. Okay, once it's activated, then you will be able to turn NDI mode on. But first, we need to go to media settings. And we want to look at the resolution of the NDI source. And if you want to change it, then you can go in and click on that. For some reason, NDI turned on. But when you go into media settings, these should be uh, not grayed out like it was. And you can go in and you can change it to 1080p. All right. And then when that happens, you can go in select the applicable frame rates. For instance, you know, you can do 1080p 60 over NDI, but for 4K, if you select 4K, right, then you see the frame rate just changed to 30. That's the maximum frame rate that you can do in 4K. You can also do 24, 25. Okay, so once you get that set, then you get out of media settings, then turn on NDI, all right? It'll give you this little warning right here that you, you will not be able to do anything else other than NDI, okay? So keep that in mind. As far as UVC, live streaming, HDMI, RTSP, you can record that. All right, so I will also do that. And I'll record to the SD card. All right, so now, what we'll do now is we will go into OBS Studio and we will then set up NDI inside of OBS Studio. Okay, so now that we have uh, NDI enabled on the tail air, we'll need to set up a source inside of OBS. Now to do this, you first of all need to make sure that you have NDI installed. Now I believe the latest version, which I'm using uh, 29.1.3 of OBS Studio, has the plugin installed, but I'm not sure if they have the SDK tools installed, which comes with NDI tools. So if you install that, then the run times will be there so that OBS will then work. To check and make sure that's working, you should then see NDI source listed here in the source list, and you can go up to tools, and you should have NDI output settings. If you did not get it installed correctly, those will not be available for options. Okay, so now to get NDI in your scene, which is this big thing right here, what you'll need to do is you'll need to add an NDI source. So I'll just add a source. I'm not going to name it anything. Uh, but there you'll pull down your source name. Now you'll see available NDI sources on your network, one of which is the tail air. So I will select tail air. Okay. And I'm going to select hardware acceleration and I'm going to go low on the latency mode if it'll select it. Okay. There we go. 
Um, now, if you have issues with your, uh, you know, where a lot of stuttering and stuff, you could try latency mode safe and see what happens with that or normal. All right, so now we have NDI. Once you get the source set up, uh, NDI will come in. Uh, it, and this is the tail air NDI 4K30. I'm also passing audio over. Now, I'm not really supposed to let you hear it, but trust me, it's working. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, everything looks good. Now, here's what I've kind of learned, at least with my setup, and it may be with yours, too. Uh, for NDI, it seems that H.265 works a lot better. Obviously, it's less bandwidth than H.264, which might have something to do with it. But with H.264, I do have a considerable amount of stuttering, and it's pretty much unusable on my network. But with H.265, it smooths it out really nicely, as you can see here. And it looks really good. I mean, 4K30 can't beat that, okay? So, I mean, most people be, should be able to use HEVC now uh, or H265. This has been around for a while, but uh, obviously, yeah. I mean, you can't beat that. I mean, it's it really looks good. Um, and, I mean, I'm, you know, moving all around, and this is 4K30. You, know, you can see there's no stuttering, nice and smooth, happy, happy. So, there we go. Uh, so if you got any questions about NDI, make sure I would reckon, definitely recommend using H.265. And, uh, you know, uh, you also you can, uh, there is another little issue. And I don't know if, if it's going on with the external. And this is, again, remember, this is an engineering sample. Uh, so whenever I plug an external microphone into NDI and I pass it over to the network, it clips. Matter of fact, I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me do this right now. I'm going to hook it up and you can tell. All right, so there we go. So this is a lavalier mic. Now, I'm going to let you listen to the to it passing over NDI, and you can hear the clicking. Now, you can record at the same time, and I tried that, but I also encountered problems with there, too, where it didn't actually record part of my audio for a long time, and then it finally decided to start recording. Uh, so, you know, again, engineering sample, the retail version, this should work really good, no problems. But this is what it sounds like over NDI currently. All right. So you may want to think about that. If you're going to be using NDI, you may just want to capture video and not the audio and have a separate source for your microphones and that sort of thing coming in, such as this microphone I'm using right here, this broadcast mic. All right. So that's, that's it. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you out. Uh, if you've got any questions about NDI or how to set it up, please comment below. I'll try to best reach out to you and answer it to the best of my abilities. And other than that, guys, thank you. Have a great day. We'll see you later.